week's hottest topics. Joining me today are entertainment and lifestyle blogger, Micah Jesse. Yeah. Welcome back. The host of Couples Therapy on VH1. Uh, the finale is next Thursday. Give it up for Dr. Jen Berman. Yeah. And journalist and author of First Class, formerly of MTV back in the day. Say yeah. hello to the legendary Allison Stewart. Okay, let's get started. Um, a 13-year-old girl in San Francisco started controversy uh, nationwide uh, by selling 177 boxes of Girl Scout cookies outside of a medical marijuana shop. A lot of people do say she was brilliant for doing this. In response, the Girl Scouts of Colorado have now banned their members from selling cookies outside of medical marijuana stores in that state. Micah, do you agree or disagree? I gotta keep it real and I'm sure you all are gonna agree. I don't agree with this. I mean, I think everyone knows, I think everyone knows that when you smoke marijuana, you get what's called the munchies. This girl, this girl saw an opportunity and she jumped on it. She's the kind of girl that we are gonna be working for one, one day. She's smart. Thank you. She's smart, she's intuitive, she's creative. And you know what? Um, like, do you think that the Girl Scout company is gonna turn away her money? No. No, but all money is not good money. I'm not for this, I'm sorry. You know, um, it's, I think it sends a bad message that you can, you know, whatever happened to the old school where parents would just take the boxes and sell them to their coworkers or right. ring the doorbell yes, or something like that. Yeah. And part of what the Girl Scouts is supposed to be about is thinking outside of the box. And stand and outside of the food town. <laughs> Why, why do you have to be outside the weed spot? But here's the thing, at least you know the guy who's going into the pot dispensary is just wants his 10 boxes of cookies and gonna go home and cuddle with them, <laughs> as opposed to some rando in a supermarket parking lot coming up and saying, hey, little girl, let me talk to you. To that, and yeah, also, yeah. you know what, some of these big box stores sell things like guns. You know, and they yeah. sit outside of those stores and sell cookies. I think it's very cookies. entrepreneurial. I have two, I have daughters, I yes. have two seven-year-olds who are Girl Scouts. Yeah. If they came up with this idea, I would totally support it because I think it's creative. I think it's thinking outside the box. I think it's, you're right. I think She's we're going to be working for that girl someday. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And, and, and to that point, I mean, grocery stores where we normally see these these young girls um, sell cigarettes and beer. So uh, you know how is it any different? It's, it's a contest, though. Because the girls also are rewarded if they sell more. more Maybe cookies. that's part of the problem. I don't know, I mean, you know, like our 13 year old knows about weed, he doesn't know everything that weed does to you, like it makes you sleepy, gives you the munchies and things like that. I would be a little pissed to find out that he was selling outside a medical dispensary. We, we polled at wendyshow.com, 77% uh, percent of you agree with the ban. In other words, you're thumbs upping the girl, so good for you. Mm -hmm. And let's move on to the next story. <clears throat> There's a mom causing firestorm on Twitter after a conversation she had with Delta Airlines that went viral. The mom was upset that after that Delta refused to let her breastfeed her 10-week-old baby without covering him up or her up on the on her upcoming flight. Delta offered a compromise to this mom. They tweeted, "I would suggest pumping if you can and bring it on board with you." Now let me just say that you're allowed to bring more than three ounces of breast milk. You can bring as much breast milk as you want on the plane. Um, it's after getting bad publicity, Delta did cave in and say it was okay, but the debate continues. So the question is, are you okay with a woman breastfeeding without a cover on a plane? Dr. J. I am very pro breastfeeding. I've written a book, Super Baby 12 is to give your child a head start in the in in the world. Yeah. And I think that it's so important that moms breastfeed. It we know that all the studies show helps brain development, it helps the immune system, it helps everything. And at the same time, we live in a culture where breasts are sexual objects. Only and, in this country. Yes, in this country. And that's where the flight was. Yeah. And, and I don't know that I would want to be sitting next to someone who I didn't know and, and seeing her breast. And I, and I think yeah. that there, there is a level yeah, of modesty. Dr. Jen, I agree with you. I know, I know this is a sensitive subject for me because I'm a guy, right? So I don't have breasts. But, um, you know, um, <laughs> I. Uh, no, nor do you like breasts. How you yeah. doing? Well, <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> you know, it, it's a, it would be uncomfortable for me, I have to be honest. Yeah. yeah. I have to say though, in terms of things that are disgusting on airplanes, this is way down like on the list. Take their have you shoes flown off and lately? Show their toes. And yeah. I actually I think First of all, that's what they're here for, right? And the other thing about that tweet, which I think is weird, is those breast pumps are expensive. And unless Delta's giving them away with a half a glass of soda. I mean, also imagine trying to get one of those through security. Okay, um, I, I have a problem with this. It, you know, if you're gonna be breastfeeding, I please just put a cover over your boobs. Also, also I would like for the airline 
to be warned ahead of time that you're gonna be a breastfeeding mom. That way they can sit you all the way in the back of the plane so that nobody's looking at you doing it. And you, you know, just have a little bit more discretion. At wendyshow.com, we polled 61% of people said they have no problem breastfeeding with no cover on airplanes. Okay. Our next story is uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken commercial. Have you seen this one? Okay, this, it's the one in South Africa that's causing controversy this time, KFC. Um, the commercial is about a little girl who's um, feeling her, out, out of place, her first day at school in a new country. Take a look at the commercial and then we'll talk. The question is, is this commercial racist, Allison? Let's just, let's just say that in February, no one should just say fried chicken. Let's just start a rule, you know, especially KFC. I mean, they have had problems with this before in yes. terms of insensitivity, yeah. especially given their product and the history and the stereotypes around fried chicken. I think about this commercial as being more ignorant and problematic mm -hmm. than racist. I think racist is a really hard word. Yeah. Because you're taking an American stereotype. I mean, I Googled what's comfort food in South Africa. There's nothing about fried chicken. <laughs> but there's no so comfort food. KFC is selling fried chicken. That's what they sell. That, that's yeah. it. And look, I am no KFC fan. They have some of the worst animal cruelty records around, and I'm, I'm a vegan, mm -hmm. so I am no fan of theirs. And at the same time, if they're selling their product, which is fried chicken well, in they South Africa. A little white girl? A little white South the, African girl? That was my point. Well, well, but the population there, they're, they're 8.9% of the population is white. That's not who they're looking to sell so, to. That's not the, the majority of people in South Africa. This stereotype only exists in America. I was speaking to some of my friends who are from other countries, and they said, we don't even know that this stereotype even exists. KFC's intention here was positive and it was very clear. It's about bringing people together. And if it takes fried chicken to bring people together, <laughs> then so be it. Um, the uh, KFC marketing director said, we wanted an advert that would show how the great taste of KFC creates moments that connect people. Personally, as a foodie, um, I feel like food connects people like nothing else. I, I thought that those little girls were cute and sweet and I, Sorry, but because you might want me to say it's racist, I don't see this as being racist. I see this as food bringing people together. And then, and then some people, like on my staff, looked at it and said, well, why does she have to be licking her fingers? Because that's what you do when the food is good. <laughs> licking good. <laughs> All right, so we, we polled at wendyshow.com. 73% of you said that the commercial is not racist. Clap in the audience if you think the commercial is racist. Well, that was, that was a finger-looking spicy uh, panel today. <laughs> Thank you all for coming by. Yeah. For more information about all of our panelists, go to wendyshow.com, everyone.